Joining us now is U.S. Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia. Mr. Secretary, thank you for joining us this morning. Why are these numbers still so high and so elevated going on almost three months of this crisis as states start to reopen? Yes, sir. It, it is a, uh, another uh, week of uh, elevated unemployment claims. Uh, as you say, it's, it's a, a drop from where we've been. We also revised downward uh, our report for the, the week prior. I do think that uh, some of the claims that we're seeing now are claims that were uh, filed actually in prior weeks, but are uh, only now, you know, in a sense, hitting the books because of uh, the volume that the states have been dealing with. Uh, but we, we still know that these numbers reflect uh, a lot of hardship for American workers and uh, families. Fortunately, uh, the president and Congress acted so swiftly back in March to put relief programs in place. And the other thing uh, that uh, we know is that we're reopening. And I think we're now seeing a lot of people going back to work. Uh, my hope is that in the next few weeks, we will see actually millions of people go back to work. We'll be seeing people going back to work at a pace that we've never seen before either, which does not mean the, the hardship will end, uh, but we're turning a corner. That, that's sort of where I wanted to go, which is how many of these job losses do you expect to be permanent? Well, that's been uh, of great interest to me since the uh, monthly jobs report that we put out for April a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of the things that report showed that of people who've uh, lost their jobs, they actually uh, 90 percent have said they expect to go back, that it's temporary. You look back at uh, the Great Recession, that number was about 70 uh, percent thought the loss was permanent. Uh, it, that's not a total surprise, right, because uh, we... Uh, came into this economic difficulty by a completely different route than in times past. But it's really important now that we reopen promptly and safely. Uh, and I think that gives us a good chance of getting a lot of those jobs back. So many of those jobs actually are there. Uh, they're just waiting for the, the, the workers to come back and come back safely. And we know we'll lose some, but I think many, many, many are still there. I mean, how, how do you think about that at a time where we still don't have a vaccine and we still don't have a game-changing treatment? And so for those industries that rely on close contact and face-to-face and, -face and it's hard to social distance, what's going to happen to those jobs? Well, by the way, I was down in Florida yesterday with the vice president. Uh, that's a state uh, under the governor there that I think has done a very good job uh, managing this virus and, and is uh, getting along well with its reopening. It was uh, terrific to see that, although... Uh, they're facing challenges, we know, in their, in their uh, tr tourism industry, which will be one of the harder ones to bring back. But uh, we've been very focused, among other things, the Labor Department, on providing uh, guidance on safe workplaces through uh, OSHA. OSHA has been providing guidance since uh, late January, early February, on how to keep people safe in the workplace uh, uh, so that workers, employers know uh, the right things to do. And I, and I do think it's going to be manageable, uh, distancing in the workplace where that's not possible. People will use masks, other protective gear. Uh, but I think businesses across the country are finding ways to get it safely done. And we'll uh, continue to work with them on that. And, and we'll also continue to uh, protect the workers and make sure things are being done properly. Mr. Secretary, uh, uh, Deutsche Bank this morning asks the question, how can we be printing two million plus jobless claims nine weeks in. Their view is that it's not just about the lockdowns in this country, but what they're calling a more permanent reallocation of workers away from jobs and industries that require a high degree of face-to-face -face interaction. And we can all imagine what those might be. Aren't there some in which it will be impossible or very difficult or expensive to implement distancing? Uh, these, these are important questions. I think that the uh, majority of the job losses uh, we're seeing, I think probably the great majority, are a result uh, of the lockdown. But we know there are other things going on. There are supply chain disruptions, and there are going to be knock-on effects on our economy, and our, our economy will change. So it's, it is a dynamic period where, at the same time, we're seeing job creation. Uh, we've seen, seen extraordinary hiring, for example at uh, some of the big box retailers uh, and uh, some of the online companies. So there will be a shift in our economy. Uh, I think we'll see people going back to many, many of these jobs. But, but yes, there, there, will be, there will be some long-term changes as well. And some of those will be very good for uh, American jobs, American workers. I think we will see uh, a re-strengthening of U.S. manufacturing, uh, bringing uh, uh, our supply chain back home or back to friendlier territory than China. 
And, and I think some of those changes will actually be very good for U.S. job creation. I mean, manufacturing plants have already had to close because of people testing positive. You mentioned, Secretary Scalia, that, that safety is what you're focused on with OSHA. Why haven't you put out a temporary emergency standard for workers that are susceptible and in, are in industries that they could be susceptible and essential workers, for instance, to getting COVID-19? Well, again, from very early on, OSHA has been working uh, closely with uh, the CDC and in some cases other agencies to uh, identify for companies, for workers, the kinds of things that they need to be doing uh, to keep workers safe. And it's also uh, been responding to uh, employee complaints, including employee complaints that uh, they've raised safety, raised safety concerns and perhaps been retaliated, which is a, a serious matter. Uh, we do not believe at this time that a, a mandatory regulation uh, advances uh, safety in the workplace beyond what we can achieve through the uh, tools that we're using. And in fact, one of the really remarkable things about dealing with COVID-19 has been how fluid and dynamic this entire situation is. It seems even less than once a week, we're in a different place. The guidance that we're using gives us more flexibility uh, than a mandatory standard would do. Uh, and, and, and so we, that's another reason. We just, at this time, don't think it's, it's the right route to go. Uh, we're finding other ways to bring people back and keep them safe.